Hi, I'm Justin Salomon. I'm going to talk to you about <coughs> mostly about a stitch, a new stitch, the circumferential uh, compression stitch that I believe uh, it really will help us heal the meniscus tears that we never thought before were possible to heal. In disclosure, I'm a founder and chief medical officer of Soterix Orthopedics and a consultant for Moximed Orthopedics. So let's go back and think about what we learned during our first year of residency. We look at this picture of this free body diagram and then we ignore it for the rest of our careers. But if you really think about it, the forces that act on the meniscus within the knee are such that it's actually more important to fix the tibial side of the tear than it is the femoral. But we never had a good way to fix the tibial side, so we just really never talked about it. The best, the best gold standard surgery would be inside out with femoral and tibial side of fixation, but it's unrealistic for most of us to be able to do that quickly and atraumatically for our patients. And I think we just pretty much stopped talking about the tibial side. But it's time to start talking about it again. The synovial fluid enters into this space and fills the gap, and the meniscus is dynamic as the knee is bent or, or, or where uh, weight is bared through the knee, and it's simply not gonna heal. And I think a lot of what we see on MRI was signal inside of the meniscus afterwards, partial healing, and, uh, and that the tibial side never heals, and then, it's a, and then it can propagate, it's a stress riser for a future tear. And we see so many failures, this probably has a lot to do with it. So this is a different way of thinking. The synovial fluid is your best friend and your worst enemy. It's your worst enemy because it fills these defects like I just mentioned and causes the gap to be held open. But it's also your best friend because it has nutrients. Why would the collagen meniscal implant heal? Why will the meniscus heal? When you have a flap tear, it doesn't turn black and necrotic. It's healthy, viable tissue. The synovial fluid is imbibed in and out of these little canals within the meniscus, this has been shown and it can heal. It just has to be anatomically reduced and uniformly compressed, just like every tissue in the body, just like bone. The thing is the meniscus moves, a normal meniscus has motion, and perhaps when we tack it back to the capsule in a significant way, we restrict that motion. So everything we've done to date is central to peripheral needle penetration across the meniscus with fixation into the perimeniscal capsule which clearly has neurovascular risk. It brings in that posterior capsule and then we lock them in extension, which may further pull the meniscus out of the knee. And think about the cases you've had where you've used one of these devices or any other repair technique where you do inside out or, or a, a hybrid suture implant. The meniscus looks like it's pulled out of the knee a little bit. Whether that's important or not, I do not know. So you get great healing in the areas where it's being compressed and where it's not compressed, you actually get gap formation. The other thing that's interesting is when you look at what you're really doing with, with these techniques of central peripheral needle penetration across the meniscus, is you get little triangles above, and usually we don't fix the tibial sides. You end up just with a little triangle above on the central edge tissue, right? So your cut through here is possible. It's just a little tiny triangle. And if it cuts through that, you have a failure. So let's look at the best version of an inside out. An inside out, the gold standard, you'd have fixation above and you'd have fixation below, and you'd have two of these triangles, right? This, is, this would be the, considered the gold standard, which I believe not many people are really doing uh, because it's difficult and because neurovascular, because inside out has a lot of issues, which I won't talk about. Um, but this is what the circumfer circumferential compression stitch looks like. It goes around the entire tear. It shows the tibial side and femoral side at the same time, and look at how much central edge tissue you're incorporating into the repair. So it's tibial and femoral side compression at the same time. You can use it at the popliteal hiatus, no problem. It goes between the, popliteal, between the popliteus and the meniscus. You're passing the stitch behind the meniscus and then through the meniscus. So this is what, there are different devices that you can use. This is the one that I use. It has a curved upper jaw and a protractable, retractable lower jaw. This is key for being able to get into the tight compartments of a knee and really get everywhere that you need to go. The other thing that's really important is that the needle deflect away from the upper jaw and then out through the tip. So in doing so, you can be sandwiched right between the femur and the tibia and the needle never pops through and hits the femur. And then you need to be able to pass both sides with one insertion of the device. You pass behind the meniscus and then through the meniscus on the other side of the tear. Why is this important? Well, besides ease of use, 
it's important because you, if you had to go back in the knee between passes, you can get tissue bridges, the fat pad, and then you're, you're screwed, or you can get uh, uh, girth hitches, where you went around your stitch once, and as you pulled out, it locked itself. Now, both of those things are not the end of the world. You can get through them, but they're very frustrating. And it's less traumatic to just insert it once, pass it on one side, then pass it on the other. So this makes it very easy to do a circumferential compression stitch, which I believe is the key to getting a higher uh, rate of healing for our meniscus repairs and also allowing us to repair all tear types. So this is just an example of a typical vertical peripheral tear. This is a lateral meniscus, which right, this is, this is central to the popliteal hiatus, so the artery and nerve are back there, right? Never have to think about artery or nerve. Upper jaw falls on the femoral, uh, femoral side, lower jaw is extended underneath, pass it behind the tear, behind the meniscus, and then on the other side of the tear, retract the lower jaw and pull out. And you'll see it reduce against the tibial side of the meniscus and then tie on the femoral side. And this is just a Revo knot. It's same, same opposite. So underhand, underhand, overhand, slide it in, push on it, and put a couple half hitches on it. Now, watch the, how the meniscus is mobile. So I pass it here peripherally, but I can't get the device back because the meniscus is mobile. I need to retract the lower jaw to get it back because it's like one of those finger traps, right? So you have to have a retractable lower jaw, or you could stick the device back there. So retract the jaw, pass it back through on the other side of the tear, retract and pull out. And so I think in this case, I put three of them in. I'll show you the final product here in a second. So that's the femoral side, and then you'll see the tibial side also has the same compression. Would compress the intersubstance portions of it. Great healing. Look at how the meniscus is sitting within the joint. It doesn't look like it's extruded at all. This was one of the earlier ones that I did. This was a tibial sided vertical tear uh, with an ACL. This patient, I showed this, is one of the first cases. There's big femoral sided knots, and I'll show you the tibial side. This patient developed a cyclops lesion. So I was able to go back eight months later to debride the cyclops and get a good second look. And what you'll see is the sutures synovialize and the knots embed into the meniscus. This is the same thing that Dr. Scaglione showed with the fast fix knots. The tibial side is healed. And now I'm gonna pull back and I'll move the femur through a full range and you'll see that there's not one groove on that femur. The knots truly embed into the meniscus and the suture truly synovializes. And notice how the meniscus is sitting in the joint and during the surgery I didn't have to worry about neurovascular risk or popliteus entrapment or capsular entrapment. Okay, let's go on to radial tears. So there, there's a lot of evidence. Uh, in fact, if you really look at the literature, these, these have a, a good healing rate. They're hard to repair and they're hard to do a good job. But if you did a good job with the repair, they will heal for sure. So the literature is 100% behind these healing. Now, I believe that the circumferential stitch will repair it and heal it better than ever before. And that's for two reasons. One, tibial side compression. And two, we're going side to side. It's not side to side to back, which is what every other technique does. Side to side and tibial side compression. And there's a study, this is out of Harvard in 2014. Basically, the side to side circumferential compression stitch compared to an inside out stitch uh, was better in terms of displacement uh, which is basically gap formation, failure load, and stiffness compared to inside out. And that was measuring from the femoral side. Imagine if we had measured from the tibial side. Here's an example of a radial tear in a 25-year-old football player. You can see the popliteus behind it there. So this is one of the earlier versions of the device, passed on the left side, then you had to load the other side, passed on the right. Put three stitches in and then a central stitch, and the central stitch was switched out for PDS in this case because I didn't have the experience with the knots yet. Um, but uh, here's what it looks like eight months later on vision scope needle endoscopy. So this is a needle you can put in, put some saline in, and look at it. He went back to full football, unrestricted, no pain, and he's now six years out, five years out. This is a 19-year-old. I like this one because there's no posterior horn back there, and then you find it flipped up into the notch. Now, this is a good example. This would be so easy to remove and move on to the next case, but he's 19, and you want to give this a shot. There's your, there's your implant. So I'm going to put the stitch. I'm going to basically, in this case, since it's lost its shape, isn't it amazing how the meniscus can plastically deform? So it's been in the notch, so now it's shaped like the notch. It's alive. So I bring it back down. I'm just going to go around it since there's no apex. Okay, and let the knee mold it back into an apex. Now, I never go around it like this unless it's squared off already or rounded. 
And this one I had vision scope needle endoscopy, I think four months later. Yeah, four months later. Starting the notch where that meniscus used to be flipped and pulling it down into the joint. Now, you can't probe, but you can flush saline and it makes it bounce a little bit. Clearly, it's not as good as having a probe. You can see a little fat on my knot there. I must have dragged it in when I was pushing down the knot. Now, that's why that one's still visible there. The, uh, I usually just say stem cells when that happens. Okay, let's move on to horizontal cleavage tears. A, a whole area where we just have completely ignored. I'm out of time, so I'm gonna just flip through this quickly. So basically, um, we've shown that, that the contact pressures in areas are altered from it leaving a tear in there and from doing meniscectomy. And I'm just gonna show one of these examples. And there's a study by Dr. Kurzweil. And if you look at the literature, these heal. So here's a horizontal cleavage tear. Again, that's a popliteal hiatus. This is a lateral meniscus. Pass the stitch behind the meniscus and then tie in front. So you've already, I square off the front edge. The white, white tissue, I never repair white, white. Uh, if it's white, white, you just remove it. But most of the tears are red, white. Uh, so anyway, I go around it. Having squared it off, I can go around it. And this is one year later on vision scope. I'm gonna stop there because I went over, but I have a lot of other stuff, happy to talk anytime. That's the only knot you can see that correlates with that knot there. Thank you.